you know, the brothers sometimes you saw them embracing like they just couldn't live without each other, without each other, and then there were other times they were, I mean, well, to the ultimate, but they were at each other's throats. Sure. What's What's your relationship like as brothers? Any similarities? Now or in this moment? Well, well no, I mean ever. I mean, because we see them through the years. What about right. you guys? Okay, teenage years. How was it, the relationship? A little rough. They were rough. Yeah. Really? Teenage years were rough. Yeah. We were at each other's throats. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, who, was the, who was the antagonist? <laughs> <laughs> he was the target. Yeah, he was torturous. You agree? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was brutal. How so? Because I, I was the older brother, I had to set the example. I had to, you know, my, my parents were, were harder on me than they were on, on, on Charlie. And um, I, I wanted to make him pay. You wanted to make yeah, him because, suffer. <laughs> because everything that he didn't get at a particular age, I got. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. drove him insane. Mm -hmm. You both have mentioned that Dan was not real keen right. on Charlie and you doing the movie. No. What exactly did he say? Did you? Well, he laid into me. He did. He, he laid, laid into in me more than he laid into Charlie. Um, he was casual with me, saying, "You sure this is something?" You and he would get again. He was Zoom. easier on you. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. <laughs> right. And he would get me on the phone and just berate me for. What would he actually say? He was terrified. He thought that th this movie was going to lead Charlie back down the, the path of destruction, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I, you know, was trying to convince him otherwise. And I guess I wasn't giving a very compelling argument. And um, so finally we just had to say, look, this is, this is something we're doing. I, I know you can't give us your blessing, but we're going to do it. And uh, he saw the, f the finished product that night, uh, last week, and, and he was blown away by it. I'm, I'm sitting at, you know, up at night thinking, what am I going to do? You know, I had no real plan except to just to follow the instincts and, and play and, truthfully and, and go with the, with the truth and, and let adrenaline drive me towards the truth, you know? And I mean, there's a lot of stuff I could draw on, obviously, the, my lifestyle for two decades, but, um, you know, there's only so much that, uh, sorry? I don't believe it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a certain line you have to cross where it is fiction, you know? You are snorting lactose, the vodka is water, the, the women are actresses, you know, there's, there's a certain thing that's, your mind still exists and, you know, convinces you that it's fiction, so mm. there's like a dichotomy that, that, you're, that you're stuck in, it's this, uh, it's, it's really kind of hard to explain. Mm -hmm. We were under a tremendous amount of time, yeah. um, crunch, to get all of them, we were telling 30 years in the lives of these guys mm -hmm. in a 35 day shoot. And a very, very low budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, they were uh, extreme conditions, to be sure. Wow, does this mean like you guys have like, grown up? You're like professional, you're polite, you're on time, you're on budget? He had to be. Yeah, yeah. He had yeah. to be, yeah. So you'd agree with that? You've grown up? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I think I've grown up yeah. more noticeably than you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you grew up and stayed there. I. Went right. back and forth, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> there were moments where I felt uh, I may have been exploiting him. I may have been exploiting his, his uh, past and his experiences. And the day that he took his one-year cake, to give you, you know, a cake for one-year sobriety, and then two and three and so on, um, I had him in a scene with uh, doing fake cocaine, smoking a fake joint, drinking out of a bottle of vodka with it, which had water in it, and a stripper on his lap. And I thought, what, this is exactly what my father warned me against. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm terrified now uh, of what I'm putting him through. And we talked about it. And Charlie looked at me and said, brother, there are no coincidences. I'm exactly where I need to be. And um, I think to to a large extent, and, and uh, talked to our father about this the other night, it's this performance and this experience is going to allow him to kind of move forward with his life. It's, I think it's the definitive word on, on what he went through. It's now on film, it's on record. Yeah, but I, I said something earlier today that uh, it, it, it was sad, but it was true. I, I said to somebody, well, the bottom line is the guy I played is dead, God rest him, and I'm alive to tell that story. So, 
the victory lies in that. Your story has a much happier ending. Exactly. Than yours, yeah. My story's going on. You know, it's some parts of it are just beginning.